The four Rat Pack hikers, Carl, Dick, Clyde, and Larry, hiked up to Homestead Meadows in Larimer County, Colorado, via the Lion Gulch Trail, which was recently reopened after rebuilding from the devastating historic flash floods of September 2013. Homestead Meadows is on the National Register of Historic Places, with eight homesteads established between 1889 and 1923. The Homestead Act of 1862 encouraged Western expansion by opening America's public land to agricultural settlement. Under the Homestead Act, more than one million families received title to over 248 million acres of public land across the Western United States. A land seeker had to be a United States citizen or express intention of becoming one, be older than 21 years of age or the head of a household, and own fewer than 160 acres of land. Acquiring title to the land took determination and hard work. A person had to prove up the land, meaning that a house had to be built within five years, the land had to be occupied at least six months of each year, Evidence of making an income related to the property had to be shown, and a portion of the land was to be cultivated. The usual homestead contained 160 acres. After a six-month period, the land could be purchased for $1.25 per acre. After five years, title to the land cost only a filing fee of $15. Through the years, these homesteads changed hands many times. Eventually, Homestead Meadows became a part of one large ranch owned by the Martin and Edith Holmholtz family. In 1978, the United States Department of Agriculture Forest Service paid $1,344,000 for 2,240 acres of land known today as Homestead Meadows. The Laycook Homestead Little is known about William Laycook. Although he was the first homesteader in the area, Laycook only stayed a few months. The resident most closely associated with this homestead is William Turner House, grandson of Mr. and Mrs. Charles Ingert, who homesteaded farther north in Homestead Meadows. Not only did he live here year-round from 1933 to 1952, the longest continuous stay of any area resident. He also bought up five of the other homesteads, Ingert, Boren, Walker, Laycook, and the nearby Pullen property. House and his wife Lucille, along with their two children, Nona and Monty, made these meadows their home. House was a rancher and logger. He operated a sawmill, selling firewood, mine supports, and milled lumber in Estes Park, Longmont, and Jamestown. Many of the wooden bridges in Boulder County came from his ranch. When House left in the 1950s, the sawdust was piled higher than the cabin. The house was dismantled by the next owner, Jack Coffey, and reconstructed in Allen's Park with additions. The Boren Homestead Robert Boren was a seventh of eight children born in Texas. In 1874, Robert married Julia Ann Wright, and together they moved to Colorado. At 44 years old, Julia died in 1898 from complications of the birth of her ninth child, Joel. In 1899, Robert moved his children to Lyons so he could acquire land in Homestead Meadows. He received his final certificate of patent in 1906. Boren and his two youngest children, Mina and Joel, lived year-round in Homestead Meadows. Boren ran cattle, cut timber and hay, and sold potatoes and lions to make ends meet. Mina remembered the hard winters. Days were filled with wood to chop, cattle and horses to feed, and paths to shovel free of snow. Long, cold evenings were spent with a game of dominoes or listening to her father play the fiddle while she played the organ. After his children had grown and moved away, Boren continued living on the ranch alone. In 1925, he sold the property to his son-in-law, Roy Christner, Mina's husband. The Walker Homestead. 
Around the turn of the century, Sarah Walker and her family came to the United States hoping to find a better life than the poverty they had known in England. After living in several eastern states, the family moved to Lyons in 1908. After a time, Sarah and her husband separated, and she took up the homestead. Sarah was the only woman to homestead here, receiving her final certificate of patent in 1914. A milk cow, chickens, and garden supplied most of her needs. A nearby spring provided plenty of water for her and the animals. Not having a horse, Sarah walked down Lion Gulch to Highway 36, hoping for a ride to Lyons to sell her eggs and cream. Carrying supplies, she returned home the same way. Sarah outlived both her children as well as her husband. After more than 15 years in Homestead Meadows, Sarah moved to Lyons. Thereafter, the property changed hands many times. For a brief period in the early 1950s, the cabin was used as a schoolhouse for the area's four children. The Brown Homestead Brothers Harry and Cloyd Brown claimed adjacent 160-acre properties and received their final certificates of patent in 1917 and 1919. The Brown family owned this land for almost 40 years, which is longer than any original settler in Homestead Meadows. Cloyd and the rest of the Brown family moved to California, but Harry stayed in the mountains he loved, raising registered Hereford cattle. The herd improved in quality and became increasingly in demand as breeding stock. In 1906, he registered his outstanding Herefords with the Colorado Brand Commission for a fee of $1.56. Harry wed Susan Montgomery Murray and had two daughters. Emma Jean and Mary Jane. When the girls were of school age, the family moved to Lyons for the school months and returned to the ranch each summer so Harry could work the homestead. When the depression came, cattle prices dropped alarmingly. Bulls that should have brought $5,000 each sold for less than $500. In 1933, Harry and Susan were forced to sell their entire herd. Eventually, the Browns moved permanently to Lyons, where Harry worked as town clerk. The Irvin Homestead Frank Irvin received his final certificate of patent for 320 acres in 1917. He died a short time later, with ownership passing to his widow, Mary. Over the years, this property changed hands many times. Early residents, especially R.J. Nettleton, were engaged in logging. Nettleton ran a sawmill and often took contracts for oversized wood products that other sawmills rejected. These immense logs were skidded to the mill by Nettleton's team of huge black Percheron horses. At times, the logs were so long and heavy that when loaded, his truck tipped backwards. To solve this problem, he built a large bin on the front of the truck and filled the bin with rocks to counterbalance the heavy loads. The remains of a sawmill are located north of the barn at the edge of the forest. Nettleton raised enough hay, oats, potatoes, and other vegetables to feed his family and animals. His daughter, Peg, contributed to the family income by raising rabbits in the hutches on the side of the chicken house. She sold their pelts for linings in military parkas during World War II. Peg was a student at the time and often rode horseback eight miles to high school in Estes Park. The Ingert Homestead The Ingert family vacationed in this secluded meadow for many years. In 1921, Charles Ingert received his final certificate of patent for 320 acres of land. His wife, however, deserved much of the credit for proving up the land. While Charles was busy delivering mail as postmaster in Lyons, Colorado, Mrs. Ingert traveled to the cabin by horse-drawn buggy and spent the required six months per year on the homestead by herself. Sons-in-laws Bob House and Willie Billings operated sawmills on the Ingert homestead as well as other properties in the area. A sawmill was located in a clearing south of the house. 
A third daughter, Lagora Ingert, homesteaded north of Homestead Meadows. In 1937, the Ingerts sold the land to their grandson, William Turner House. It became part of his growing ranch and timber operation in the area. The Hill Homestead Clayton Hill filed for his homestead in 1916 and received his final certificate of patent in 1921. In March of that same year, he sold the property to Daisy Baber. Thereafter, land ownership changed frequently, especially during the Depression years of the late 1920s and 30s. Charles Davis lived and logged in the area for some years before purchasing the Hill Homestead in 1942. Like Davis, those who made a living in the timber industry usually had a specialty such as bridge planks, Christmas trees, mill lumber, or firewood. Davis timber crew specialized in caps for mine props. These caps were wedged between horizontal and vertical props so that the props would fit tightly and securely. Davis and his son Hal lived on this property until the mid-1950s. In 1954, Virginia Hill added this property as well as the majority of Homestead Meadows to her holdings. Ownership then passed to Isabel in 1957, to Holmholtz in 1960, and to the federal government in 1978. The Griffith Homestead. William A. Billy Griffith purchased this land from the state of Colorado in 1923. In 1935, at age 64, Griffith went out to repair fences one day. He returned in the afternoon, around 4.30, complaining to his wife of dizziness and partial blindness. After drinking a soda, he decided to go back to work. Griffith did not return home that evening. His body was found early the next morning, June 12, 1936, by a neighbor, Arthur J. Pennington, who, with Ted Rowley of Lyons and a son-in-law, and other friends and neighbors who had searched for him after he failed to return to his home from the fields. Following his sudden death, the Larimer County ownership records show that this parcel was sold at public auction to H.F. Springer in 1938. Little is known about the activities on this ranch, except that during the 1940s, owner Roy Johns often experimented with growing different varieties of garden vegetables. Johns, who is best remembered for raising and marketing an improved variety of peas, lived on the ranch with his wife Inez. Here today, gone tomorrow. The Homestead Meadows National Historic Sites represent nearly a century of homesteading history in Colorado's Front Range. The vestiges of a once bustling community reveal the colorful lives of hard-working homesteaders and their families. Forest Service plans for the Homestead Meadows sites allow the natural process of aging and decline to predominate. There are no plans to stabilize or restore the cabins. All artifacts and antiques will remain on site giving evidence of the homesteading era. For a brief period, these meadows gave way to human occupation. Now they're slowly being returned to nature.